today we're going to be looking at building 40 gigabit networks and we're going to be using some of the following hardware. A Brocade ICX6610. You can find these very reasonably priced on eBay and these have dual QSFP connections on the back. That is going to allow us to have two ports that will be able to be accessed and span between two different machines and we'll be able to achieve 40 gigabit network connection speeds. Also, we're going to be today connecting a Windows setup and we're also going to be connecting an Unraid to Unraid setup. We're gonna be testing these with iPerf and we're gonna see what kind of speeds we can get. On the brocade switch we've got right here, we've got two connectors on the back here. Now, these are the FDR compatible QSFP connectors. We can see that we've got this one here and this runs down to this machine, this is actually going to get swapped out to this machine. And then this one, we've got all this extra length of cable, which should be more than enough to get it inside. This is what we're going to be using. This is a Mellanox Connect X3 card, and this will give us the 40 gigabit per second connection that we're after here. So we've got our card in here. It's down there, our 40 gigabit network NIC. We're going to go ahead, get the connector run in here before we actually put it in the attic. I'm going to run it through just the door. That way, if there's any problems, I don't have to crawl through the attic twice as we go through the house. Oh my gosh, we just have enough here. We'll have more than enough when we run it through the attic, but we have just enough here. It is our 20 meter, so that's 60-ish feet, uh, roughly QSFP cable. This is an active, active cable. Okay, so these cables, when they go in, they've got one orientation that they're basically gonna accept. They won't go in the other way. You'll feel them click whenever they're in place never pull or put any pressure on the wire here. Instead, use the plastic grabs that are on the backside. And so for this, I'm gonna actually put it in like this. And if you can see that there, you can hear it slide in. Let's run a couple of tests here and see if we can get the kind of results we're hoping to out of iPerf on this card. So, I, I've seen this uh, happen a couple of times to me now. Now we're hitting like right around nine gigabits per second. This is negotiating according to what it's reporting in Windows as a 40 gigabit per second connection speed. However, there's something happening underneath the hood here. And I'm gonna show you what that is here. Just go to the configuration for this particular NIC. And if we look here on information, you do have to grab this handle and pull it out. Uh, yeah, there we go. Bus type, PCIe five gigabits per second at four lanes. So we've got ourselves a problem right there. If you do that multiplication, that's 20 gigabits per second max. Now, this is an AMD system, and that's why we're seeing this on this particular PCIe slot, and that is going to be a problem. So on the 5950X, you probably are having that top slot occupied by some sort of a really monster stomping graphics card then underneath that, you've got everything else broken out into 4X lanes, and some of those might be connected to the PCH. So you might see degraded performance as well on the PCH versus a traditional full exposed PCIe bus that's going to connect up to the actual processor itself directly. So my guess is that this is actually connected to the PCH as well. We are seeing only a 4X width at a 5 gigabits per second negotiation. This card is technically capable of PCIe 3 speeds, and also 8x width. I'm going to pop out the graphics card. We're going to swap the slots. This is going to put the card in the top slot, the 16x slot. So let me go ahead, pop this out, and then we're going to test out whether or not that was right. All right, so we've got our Connect X3 here. Again, we're going to put this in the top slot here. This should give it access to all the potential PCIe lanes that it would need. And that hopefully gets us to 8X capability on the connection. Crappy uh, video card, but it will do for what we need for right now because your Ryzen system does not have a built-in GPU or APU on this model. All right, so let's test this out. So we can now see that we actually have a full PCIe 8 gigabits per second, and that is on an 8 wide lane. That is drastically different than what we were seeing just a few minutes ago. That right there explains the difference between what was being reported as the negotiated link speed 
and what the realized link speed was being significantly slower than that. So we can see here we've got our 40 gigabits per second and we currently have this set for single port traffic. So you can run tuning if you want to adjust that, but single port traffic, since this is a single port card, seems to be fine for this. If you wanted to set single stream traffic or balanced tuning, those would probably be a-okay to do also. All right, and we can see that we're approaching 18 there on a single one. So let's go ahead and set up two different servers and then we'll run that on two different ports. So if you go to the nerd tools here and then you search by stream, go ahead and turn this on and apply. And we can come back here to our terminal, screen our session one. And inside here, we're going to do iperf s, and we're going to do the p5201, and control id, and then we're going to screen session two, and we're going to do iperf s with the port of 5202, control id. So now we have two sessions. That should get us there. And running it on both of them at the same time here, we can see they're both keeping up with a pretty good stream speed. All right, we can see that we're sailing along pretty darn decent here in the 30s, 30 plus, 31, 32, 33 gigabits per second range. So that does indeed seem like what we were hoping to see. So getting Windows to work is a little bit of extra troubleshooting, possibly depending upon your system. So there are some takeaways from this. Make sure you know what kind of PCIe slot you're using when you're connecting your Windows machine to your network out there wider. If you are seeing some weird anomalous results, you probably want to start trying to find out whether or not you have the right amount of PCIe width available and you're negotiating at the actual speed that the card needs to be negotiating at. So we're going to move on now to our Unraid to Unraid setup here. This was way easier. And if you're in Linux, you're going to find that the configuration of this is typically going to be much less problematic. These cards are just detected by the kernel. They're supported very well. And there's no weird issues that I ran into. Another reason you use servers for things like Unraid and servers have lots of PCIe lanes with massive amounts of width. Intel Xenon processors have tons of PCIe lanes available for the use of PCIe cards. And let me take a second to thank our sponsor for this video, which is FS.com. They've supplied all the cables for this video and upcoming videos that are going to be related to the 40 gigabit networking and these active fiber cables that are coded to the Broadcom and my Mellanox cards really have done the trick as far as being easy to use and no headaches. Be sure to use the link in the description below for all your high performance cabling needs, especially if you're looking for some QSFP plus FDR compatible cabling. All right, now we've got our Unraid to Unraid box. The first box over here is running 40 gigabit networking, and it is also running 2697 V2 processors. I'm talking about this to illustrate something important about the core frequency of the processors and the performance that you will see from them. Down here underneath, we've got the R520, also running the 40 gigabit NICs, and 2470 V2 processors. All right, so there's gonna be something that's pretty important that happens right around the three gigahertz range. Okay, so we can see that we've started the iperf test here. We're hitting in the low to mid 20s, but this is gonna be our limiter right here. If you see that pegged processor at 100% there, that is going to limit our throughput. And so you have two options essentially. One is to increase the speed of your CPU core frequency. That will give you greater throughput. You can see here that it's even a little bit slower as we reverse this and have the 2470 V2s, which have a slower clock on the receiving end. And so I've swapped out the servers here. You can see now I've got 2667 V2s with a higher, much higher 3.3 base clock frequency. 
And that is going to allow us to receive quite a bit faster, especially when we start looking at two streams coming in here. So I've just started up the second stream and you can see that we are actually almost 240 gigabits per second. We are at like 38.9 to 39 gigabits per second on this. Now, this is a difference. If you look here, you can see that we're only at about 70 to 80% of the processor being utilized. You really do need a fast CPU combo to be able to utilize 40 gigabits for ETH traffic. Now, this is not using RDMA or any offload. We will have future videos talking about those. So make sure that you hit subscribe down below and ring the bell so that you can get notified of all of the 40 gigabit topics that we're gonna be covering. So do you need 40 gigabit networking? That's a hard one to answer, but I will say the availability of cards cheap on secondary markets, as well the availability of the cabling to be almost the exact same price as what you would pay for 10 gigabit capable cabling, does lead me to believe that if you are going to be building out something at current moment, you probably should be building out a 40 gigabit network versus a 10 gigabit network. Now, we're gonna talk about some 10 gigabit use cases. We're gonna talk about some 40 gigabit use cases. We've got future videos coming that will be distributed storage access over NFS at incredible speeds. So make sure that you tune in for those. I hope everybody sounds off below. Let me know what your networking plans are looking like. And if you have high performance networking, make sure to let me know about the things that you're doing down below. We will see you guys next time.